what would your life be like without cheese? Is cheese healthy or a no-no? Stay tuned as we discover the answer and learn how to make non-dairy cheese dishes. Hello, I'm Marcella Lynch. Welcome to another episode of Food for Thought, the cooking show that features God's eating plan as unfolded through scripture and through an understanding of God's other book, the book of nature. What would your life be like without cheese? Do you have a block of cheddar, mozzarella, jack, or Swiss cheese in your refrigerator right now? How long could you go without bringing cheese of some kind home from the market? Is it a staple in your house? Is cheese a healthy food? Should we? Or should we not be eating it once, twice, or three times a day? Most fast foods include cheese. Could you invite your friends to a party without using cheese in some form or other? You know, sandwiches and traditional hamburgers often include cheese. Cheese and crackers are a popular snack food. Isn't it interesting when we stop to think about how much cheese we use and take for granted? Every culture uses cheese in popular dishes around the world. Americans create macaroni and cheese. Italians create lasagna and pizza with cheese. Mexican enchiladas are smothered in cheese. The French feature fondues and quiche. Switzerland and most other European countries serve sliced cheeses with crusty fresh breads as a daily fare. Most short order restaurants serve grilled cheese sandwiches. When one of our nation's favorite foods, cheese, has been a popular and important food for literally centuries. Over 10 million tons of cheese are produced each year. Its popularity is probably due to the variety of tastes and uses it has and because some people associate cheese with calcium. With growing concerns in our nation about osteoporosis, many voices are advocating increased dairy product consumption, including cheese. As delicious and convenient to use as cheese is, I decided a number of years ago to learn to get along without it. And here are some of the reasons that uh, bring this about. First of all, many cheeses have significant levels of fat, saturated fat and cholesterol. Actually, 70 to 75 percent of the calories in most cheeses come from fat. And the type of fat in the cheese is about two-thirds saturated fat, which is known to elevate blood cholesterol levels. And cheese also contains about 20 to 30 milligrams of cholesterol per ounce. Blood vessel damage can result from cholesterol oxidation processes in the body. Next, most cheeses are high in sodium. The average level is 250 milligrams per ounce. Salting is an important step of the cheesemaking process. Thirdly, certain cheeses may contain a variety of toxic chemicals. If cattle are, are fed aflatoxin contaminated grain, their milk will also be contaminated with the aflatoxins and the cheese made from the milk are also contaminated. Some cheeses uh, also appear to contain other potentially cancer-causing substances called mutagens. The more a cheese is ripened or aged, the more mutagens it is likely to contain. Most cheeses are ripened or aged or cured for anywhere from four weeks to two years. Harmful chemicals in cheese include tyramine, histamine, putrescine, cadaverine, and others. Such compounds have the potential to affect the brain and the circulatory system with such symptoms as migraine headaches, nausea, hypertension, and cardiac palpitation. Fresh cheeses that have not been aged or ripened include cottage cheese and baker's cheese and ricotta, and also cream cheese. And these unripened cheeses are the best choices of cheeses to use. Cheeses can be contaminated also with a number of microorganisms that can cause significant illness. Such germs have accounted for literally thousands of foodborne epidemics, 
And some of the most feared microorganisms that can contaminate cheeses are those of the Salmonella family, which can survive in cheese for long periods of time. Uh, Listeria is another dangerous microorganism that can contaminate cheese and cause serious or fatal heart and brain infections. Dairy products in general are a concern for outbreaks of illness caused by infectious agents. Well, I'm here to show you today that cheese is not an essential element of our diet, and it's not really a health food. You're better off without it. You can prepare delicious dishes without cheese that normally call for cheese. And so today we're going to be featuring, again from our Cooking by the Book cookbook, some recipes without cheese. And at the end of the show, we'll give you the address where you can order the book. Well, hi, Pat. Hi. Glad you're here to help me today. Thank we got you. a fun class coming up here with some no cheese cheese. And right. I know you two have eaten this way for a long time. Right. So the recipe is on page 147 of the cookbook. And uh, the, the part that's different than you would normally make macaroni and cheese is the, the cheese part. So we're going to show you this nice dish of macaroni and what we call cashew nut cheese. And we're going to tell you how to make this. And uh, we're not going to put it together here because a little later we're going to make a similar cheese for a different recipe. But basically the ingredients for macaroni and cheese, uh, you cook the macaroni, one cup of macaroni and one quart of boiling water with a half teaspoon salt and a tablespoon of oil. And that will cook for 15 minutes. And then when you want to make the cashew nut cheese in the blender, the ingredients for that are one half cup cashew nuts raw, two ounces pimentos, like two medium pimentos, one fourth cup lemon juice, three tablespoons of brewer's flake yeast. That gives you kind of a cheesy flavor. It's nutritional food yeast flakes one teaspoon salt, one fourth teaspoon onion powder, and you can shake a little garlic powder from a shaker, and also then you need one and a half cups water. Then when you get all of that stirred together with the cooked macaroni, you sprinkle the crumbs over the top. And so the crumbs, you could just take a fourth of a cup of whole wheat breadcrumbs and mix a tablespoon of this brewer's yeast flakes and a tablespoon of oil together, and if you have some Butter flavoring, just add a drop or two of that, and it makes it almost taste like it's margarine or cheese a little bit. And you sprinkle that all over the top, and you bake that in the oven for 30 minutes at 350. And when it comes out of the oven, then you have this nice dish of macaroni and cheese. And I used to serve this to my children and our family at home, and they'd say, what are we having for dinner today, Mom? And I'd say, oh, macaroni and cheese. And uh, they didn't know the difference. They just thought they were eating macaroni and cheese. And it's really good, and it has zero cholesterol, and it's all made from plant foods. And so we'll just take this away, Pat, and we'll talk about the next thing. We're going to have um, a pizza today, and I know everybody loves pizza. So let's find our pizza recipe here. Pizza always takes cheese, doesn't it? In the cookbook on page 80, we have the pizza recipe in with the bread chapter, because when it's bread making day, you can just pinch off a piece of your bread dough, roll it out with the rolling pin the size of a pizza pan, and you can just make a pizza for dinner that day, of course, without any cheese. But what I'd like to do today is to make the, the dough just a smaller amount of dough so that uh, it would be just what we need for one pizza for today. And we'll need a pizza pan, won't we? I think I would just like to show you also today about milling the uh, flour. I'm going to make a whole wheat pizza. And we call this dough whole wheat pizza dough. And the ingredients include one half cup of warm water, one package, uh, which is one tablespoon of the dry active yeast, one teaspoon sugar, one fourth cup oil, one half teaspoon salt, and one and a half cups of the whole wheat flour, more or less just what you need to make the right consistency. So we're going to take some of our wheat here, and we actually have a flour mill here, and it's all set to go. And every time you mill, uh, Pat, I need a dry measuring cup. Maybe you can find me something here. A whole cup? 
uh, just a cup. It doesn't matter. We're just going to put some of this wheat in the flour mill. <laughs> it just needs to, well, why? I'll tell you, I don't want one that big. So I'll just right. pour. It's okay. We'll just pour this in. You just, uh, every time you mill one cup of wheat berries, which we call these wheat berries, you end up with about one and a half cups underneath. And the wheat is going to fly right into this canister here. <laughs> Sounds like our plane is landing. The unwinding of the mill. All right, here we have our freshly milled whole wheat flour for the bread making. And this time we're making the pizza dough. So we just need to put our ingredients in the bowl here. And what we need today is a half a cup of warm water and a package of dry yeast. So we're using the rapid rise active dry yeast. And our directions here are to put a teaspoon of sugar. That's for food for the yeast. You can use a little honey or sugar to help the yeast to activate and grow a little faster and quicker and to be a little fluffier. And then we're going to add the oil, salt, and flour. So again, it's a fourth of a cup of oil. You can cut that back if you'd like to have less. It just makes the dough just a little more tender. And we also need to have a teaspoon of salt and cup and a half of flour, which uh, we already have some milled ahead and, and measured as a cup and a half here. So we're going to just mix this all together. And Pat, I'll let you just take this out of the way here and we'll make room to roll this out so that we can get a crust ready for our pizza. When you make pizza at home, you need to pre-bake the crust first. Because in the pizza parlors, when they make the pizza, they have those ovens that they just slip the pizza right off of a wooden pallet right into the oven itself. And so you need to get that crisp crust at home by pre-baking it and drying it out a little bit. And we have a nice soft crust here. We're going to knead it just a little bit to make it elastic. Recipe says just a couple minutes to make it stretchy and develop the elasticity in it. And then we just need, Pat, to put a little flour here. So we can roll it out and it won't stick to the counter. We'll go ahead and move our bowl out of the way here. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can just simply roll this out and pat it with your hands into your round pizza pan. And actually, if you don't even own a pizza pan, just use a cookie sheet. It works just as well. And then you can uh, make it in pie plates and whatever flat things you have. It's fun sometimes to have a pizza party and let everybody make their own individual pizzas. But this is a nice whole wheat pizza that has all of the parts of the kernel of wheat in it so that it contains the fiber, the protein, the carbohydrates and everything all at once. And in the pizza parlor, they bake the pizzas right on the bottom of the oven and it makes a nice crisp crust. So when you're at home, we just pre-bake this crust first. And then after about five minutes, we bring it back out of the oven and put the toppings on it. We need to just put a little of this snow stick spray on the pan so that it won't stick to the pan and we can get it out of the pan easier afterwards. So when you get it sort of stretched out, then you can just finish it with your hand, just make your hands flat and start stretching it out. And this will go right up the sides. And we're going to have pizza sauce we'll make for you and put all the trimmings and we'll make the cheese that we're going to drizzle over the top. And it's going to be just a wonderful pizza. It's a lot cheaper to make your own pizza. Used to be I thought pizza was a quick way to go out and have something inexpensive, but it's not, is it? Maybe 15 or 20 dollars. Right, we need to pre-bake this for about five minutes at 450, Pat. Okay. And uh, I'll let you take that. And I've got one here in the oven. 
that's just coming out. And uh, we've pre-baked this one already for five minutes so that you see it's, it's loose and you can just, uh, actually you can make some of these on bread making day and finish, uh, finish it when it's time for dinner. I think I'll put this here so that we can get all the, uh, so the next part of this is to make the quick pizza sauce that goes over the top. So for our recipe for the quick pizza sauce, let's look at the ingredients here. It's a one can of tomato paste plus one can of water, one teaspoon oregano, one teaspoon sweet basil, one half teaspoon salt, two tablespoons olive oil, one teaspoon onion powder, and optional really is a half a cup of veggie burger or any kind of vegetarian meat product that you might want to add to it. All right, so we're going, we already have the, the quick pizza sauce made and we did put some of this gluten vegetarian burger in it that we made in one of the other classes from, from uh, it's the protein of wheat and we've ground it up and this quick tomato sauce is the next thing that we want to spread right over this crust here. Let's just be generous and put the whole thing on here and smooth it all out so that we can top it with our vegetables and the kind of vegetables that you choose to use is totally your choice. And if you have onion haters at your house, you can leave the onions out. I love onions. I can put them in everything. But there's nice uh, vegetables like mushrooms. I like sliced tomatoes on it also. Olives, bell peppers are nice. All right, so we need to have, uh, you can slice by hand or you can be lazy and let the machine do it for you. We have here like a half of a bell pepper we'll run through here and we'll have a piece of onion. We have olives, we have mushrooms. So we'll just go put them all through at once without stopping here and we'll just sprinkle them over here. And that makes it very quick and easy to get everything ready. I'll just give this to you, Pat. Okay. And I'll just stir this all up here. And if you have somebody that doesn't like uh, onions, you do them separately and make half of it over here on this side. We also have some sliced olives that we'll put on. And uh, just, you know, I like pineapple tidbits. We have all kind of things that we can put on. Zucchini is nice to put on pizza. So I think we have a little more than we need here, Pat. I'll just stop with that right now. And here we have a few other things that we're using to garnish. Olives, of course, are a favorite with most people. And if you like um, bean sprouts, they can go on a pizza also. And I've been dehydrating things from my garden, and, and I have a lot of dehydrated tomatoes. They're kind of fun to put around on top of your pizza also. Right, so we'll make the sauce that we're going to drizzle over to take the place of the cheese now. And this is kind of an interesting thing. You're probably going to wonder, whoever thought up this set of ingredients that uh, would go together to taste kind of cheesy, but it really is nice. So let's see here. I'm going to show you the ingredient list first here called cashew pimento cheese. And we put one cup of water, one cup of cashews, one teaspoon salt, one fourth cup oil, one third cup lemon juice, and two four ounce jars of pimentos, one teaspoon onion salt, one teaspoon garlic salt, and again, three tablespoons of the food yeast flakes. And that's to give that cheesy type flavor. Right, so we're going to put the one cup of water in the blender and followed by all of the other ingredients. Here we have the cashew nuts and we have the nutritional food yeast flakes. We have a little oil. Lemon juice helps to give it a little blend of flavor that's what we need for the cheese. Our seasonings here, we have the salt and we have the garlic and onion powder and salt here. 
And if you want to know the truth, I usually stop with one jar of pimentos. And you can do both of them if you like a real reddish kind of a cheesy look. But I like to just use half the amount. And you know something? If you don't have pimentos or if they're too expensive, just use red bell peppers. Sometimes in the summertime when I have red bell peppers in the garden, I just chop them up and freeze them and use those for my pimento cheese sauce. Right? So we're going to whiz this all up till it's smooth and creamy. to give that cashews time to get whizzed up real smooth in there. And I usually wash the cashews because they're kind of uh, a little bit dirty. Well, they're not dirty, but they, they've been handled, let's put it that way, in foreign countries sometimes where they're raised, raised, <laughs> where they're uh, made. Right? So we have this cheese sauce, and you just drizzle, drizzle that over here according to how much you think is nice. And this bakes in the oven. I'll let you take that, Pat. Doesn't that look nice? And uh, this will be at 425 for 12 to 15 minutes. So don't forget that it's the first five minutes is for just the crust by itself, and then you bake it again for 12 to 15 minutes. And that's whole wheat pizza without the cheese. And Pat was telling me about a nice recipe that she, ha that she makes that I, I want her to show this to you. It's called melty cheese. And she uses it to put over nachos and to drizzle over vegetables. And uh, she's agreed to demonstrate that for us, Pat. So you need the blender too, don't you? Right, there's a clean one there. Is there a clean one mm -hmm. here? OK. Right there. This is similar to the recipe that Marcella just demonstrated. I like to go through the ingredient list with you. I'm going to go ahead and put the cashews in here and tell you a little trick that I do. The recipe calls for two cups of water, but I'm not going to put it all in. We have a four ounce jar of pimentos. We have the salt, one and a half teaspoons, a half a teaspoon of onion powder, one quarter teaspoon garlic powder, two or three tablespoons of cornstarch, and this is what's going to make it get thick. And then we have the three tablespoons of food yeast and one tablespoon of lemon juice or to taste if you like more than that. So I think we're ready now and one trick with the cashews is you put just enough water in to cover the cashews because if there's a lot of water in there they just swirl around and they don't get smooth as quickly. We're going to make some noise now. like to blend them two minutes, but I think you don't want to listen to the noise that long, so we're going to go ahead, put in the cornstarch. You don't have to worry about cornstarch being lumpy when you do it in the blender. And again, this one has the food yeast. Food yeast is 50% protein and full of all kinds of B vitamins. We have the garlic salt, regular salt, onion powder, and this one has quite a bit less lemon in it. It has a tablespoon, but we might actually enjoy it with two tablespoons according to your taste. And we're just going to whiz it up, and then we're going to cook it and pour it over nachos. And I think you need the pimentos here. You're so right. Thank you. <laughs> we want to make it look it like It gives cheese. it lots of color. Thank you. Okay, now we just have to cook it, and I'm going to let Marcella share some things with you about um, other kinds of cheese while we're cooking this one. All right, let me just move a few things here so we can get ready to go here. 
we're going to just share with you a recipe for Mar Parmesan cheese that's really neat to uh, keep on the table. I keep it at home in a shaker. This is uh, a mixture of some interesting ingredients that, um, well, it doesn't taste exactly like Parmesan, but it's a nice substitute. And the ingredients for this mock Parmesan cheese uh, are one cup of lightly toasted sesame seeds. And you can toast the sesame seeds in the blender, I mean in the microwave, or you can toast them in the oven or on top of the stove in a dry skillet. Then uh, one fourth cup nutritional yeast flakes, one half teaspoon onion powder, one half teaspoon garlic powder, and one half teaspoon salt. And this is the ingredients for the mock parmesan, and you just keep it handy so that you can shake it out onto things like that. We just have on display here also some of the non-dairy cheeses that are available in the supermarkets. This is one that's like mozzarella, and you can get the light cheeses and the cheeses that look like um, cheddar, an arch kind of cheddar substitutes. You can actually grate them and use them on the pizza and at different times like that when you'd like to, too. And uh, Pat, I think we'll just uh, go ahead and... Uh, use some of this other cheese here right. to drizzle over there because we're just getting a little <laughs> short of time here. And let's just um, drizzle this over to show that when you get that cooked, it looks prettier. And you can just drizzle the cheese over the nachos. These are the baked tortilla chips so that there are no fat added to them. Okay, Pat, do you think you could give us a little summary of what you've done there? Yes, this cheese sauce has gotten nice and thick now. What I like to do when I'm going to have nachos, maybe for the evening or the next day, is I do all the blending and I put it in a jar in the refrigerator. You need to use it while it's hot, and then you can pour it over vegetables or nachos. Nachos are always fun in the evening, especially with kids, and I like them too. Well, everybody does. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. I appreciate sure. you showing that to us. And we're just happy that you tuned in today, and uh, I've had a lot of fun, and it's fun to try to create things without cheese that tastes good. We Hope that you'll remember that this program is sponsored by the Three Angels Broadcasting Network, and we do appreciate your prayers and your financial support, and we hope you'll join us again next time for more Food for Thought. If you've enjoyed the recipes and cooking tips in this program, you'll want to order our Food for Thought resource sheet. We'll tell you how you can order the cookbooks you've seen used on this program, along with other information that will help you cook healthful, attractive vegetarian meals. For your free copy of our Food for Thought resource sheet, please write to us at Food for Thought, P.O. Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896, or call 618-627-4651.